Hi friends. So in the last video, we kind of uh, understood what was what principal component was, uh, and this is is a very different kind of a video. What we are trying to uh, utilize the power that we have gained from principal components is to uh, identify the anomalies. So uh, when you have lots and lots of attributes, uh, let's say in a banking or or or, uh, or a, a card transaction, and you want to you want to predict whether uh, the, the transaction was a fraudulent one and or or, or this is uh, when you have health data set and you want to predict whether whether a person is diseased uh, or not and, and so on and so forth you can utilize because you would have a lot of different attributes to cover and understand uh, the data you could you could utilize the power of principal components and 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 predict the the, the the record which is an anomaly anomaly could be anything you you could have two different different labels of data as well uh, data set a which belongs to label a would be an anomaly for b because it doesn't doesn't simply fit in 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 in, in the house of b so you could say it's it's uh, the data up appearing is an anomaly so there are different different techniques to detect anomaly uh, pca could be potentially one of them so what we are trying to take a look is we have uh, let's say we have the iris data set here and and based on this data set we are trying uh, to build a model with the power of principal components and uh, we essentially want to uh, classify one from another so uh, all this this uh, what I'm trying to do here is, is again redundant. We are just trying to uh, sample the data. This is data sampling and we have created our, our test and train uh, data sets. So that's, that's all. I would not delve uh, deep into this explaining this. This is again uh, the same exercise. Now once we have this, so this is our, our train data set. So uh, we have the train data set which has the, the three different uh, species of iris and, and then what we are trying to do is we want to uh, use principal components and not use all of these so, so with with the data set what we had is we had four features currently uh, and we want we let's say we do not need all of the four features to predict these species so let me use principal components uh, this is the principal component code and then let's take a look at the cumulative variance explained here now for this uh, if you see we had this is the, the variance the first principal component explains 72.8 percent of variance in the data okay so there you go the first principal component explains 72.8 the second another 23 percent and the third 0.3 percent and the fourth one 0 0.05 so there is hardly anything for the fourth principal components i do not need the fourth principal component to be able to classify so uh, it's 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 more than what i need i would overfit the model so if I take a look at my principal component data it looks something like this so you have the four principal components PC 1 2 3 and 4 uh, and this is a standardized standardized data now let's try to build the model so what I'm doing here is I am preparing a data frame with the species against the principal components so if you see here that is training data let's take a look at this this essentially has the results alongside the principal components that's all this is doing and now as i said i do not need all the four of them i'll do this with just the three principal components so if you see here the next thing that i do is i just rephrase my data frame to contain only the three principal components alongside the results and that to the first three of them uh, and, and similarly what I am trying to do is test data I am just going to align it and 
then what you see in the test data is everything the three principal components and not the labels because that's something that I'm going to score on I build a, a SVM model uh, just go with this and then just to show the power I predict against the the test data and then with the species you see the results here I am bang on I'm about 99% good I have just scored everything well enough with just the three principal components I so what I'm the message I'm trying to convey is I can detect the anomaly I can label the, the data correctly if uh, and with that too with much less number of attributes or much less number of components uh, because the principal component encounters for most of the, the variance in the data set so it's it's essentially it's it's really very powerful uh, although uh, you know when you have a lot of data you when you consider the the, the deep learning models like uh, auto encoders I think principal component would stand alongside if not more powerful to auto encoders for for neural network uh, that's that's the message for 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 this and the, the next one we take this to the next level and we uh, delve we start to look at neural network the, the first basic one I would introduce you to neural networks and, and how that uh, is, is, is done in R thank you